hello and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It Don. So I've already recorded this entire section, uh, this entire video, and the file was corrupted. Which upsets me because before I actually start recording, I do several snippets of recording to make sure that it's not going to be a corrupted file, the audio is okay, and the video is okay. I usually do about five of those before I actually start recording. And none of those were corrupted. Um, they were all okay. And then I go to upload my video, and it's uh, it's not playable. It's corrupted. So I want to try and avoid fighting these guys as much as I can, because uh, I did run across a durability issue in my initial recorded uh, session. But I think I'm going to have to kill this guy. Or not. You know, on account of not being able to hit him. Yeah, this is just a dead end area. I think, yeah, there's a spitter there. Yes, this whole area is a dead end area. There is a an oddity here, if I'm not mistaken, right here. Yeah, fossilized egg. Unborn life made stone eons ago. Hauntingly beautiful. One point of experience. And then we're done here. We don't have to be here anymore. Ooh. Just gonna run past that. Save durability. Someone did give me some very, very good advice for this area in the comments. Said, don't try to fight the environment. Just get done what you need to get done. And that's true for the next area as well. The, uh... Enemies just keep coming. Get out of the way, you jerk. Alright. So if you come here... I like this. All these, uh... Descriptors are stacked on top of each other. So there's the cavity. The heart-like organ is something different. Uh, the mysocardia. It's actually a quest item. If we go here. The mysocardia. The slimy organ has an appearance of a heart whose muscle fibers are entwined with red mycelium, and it is full of viscous liquid. It smells horrible. Alright, then we're done here. I think there's rubble in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I'd rather just avoid fighting those guys if I can. It's a waste of my uh, my resources at this point. Right, another fossilized egg. Uh, this area connects to all the areas that we have gone through already. So we don't need to go back there. So this connects to these and that one. Uh, the north is the only way we haven't been. I think it's just the one area. Do that, that's fine. In the last episode, I actually made it to the uh. Curtis Outpost. There's actually nothing back there worth grabbing. Um, this area is just a dead end for no real reason. So, we're just gonna leave. Because I... Yeah, I went back there, there's nothing in that corner. It kind of looks like there might be a cave exit there or something. But I didn't see anything. So, I'm gonna leave it be for now. And we're gonna leave this, uh... Mycelial... Something. I don't know. Now I'm sad I didn't get to use my darn introduction. So when I started the uh, episode initially, I said something about the mycelial menace. I don't know. I thought it sounded good. And now I gotta 
Ugh, stupid corrupted files. What a waste. What a waste of time. So now I feel pressured for time. What was I doing? Oh, I was recharging my uh, taser. I go back and check that way. Uh, there's nothing for me there. Right, so we have to we have to go north. Uh, there's no other option. Um, there's also a lot of stuff in this next area. It's a very large area, and we have a finite amount of time to explore it. And I'll show you what I mean when when the time comes. So basically, we just want to blow through here as fast as we can. There are what appear to be quest items here. There's these mutagens and these containers. And a pendulum, so we'll read that after. I'm just trying to get through this as fast as I can. Um, because once this runs, once this stacks up all the way, we get the Eye of Chert on us instead of Creeping Dread. And we don't want that. We do not want that at all. So... Once the Eye of Chert is on us, uh, these creatures start spawning in. We'll probably end up having to fight at least one group of them. Yeah, so the Eye of Chert is on us now. I'm going to run out of here real quick and reset that. Because uh, I don't want to fight more waves of them than I have to. Uh, so far I've run across three types. There's like a Chert something devourer, which is like a melee creature. Uh, there was a sower which was like a burrower essentially. It shoots a bunch of like poison crap at you. And there is a uh, like a chertling scanner, which is like this little imp looking thing that uses psi abilities. So they're all pretty nasty. Don't want to deal with them, but we will have to. Because it, I mean, one, one or two waves isn't too bad, but in my experience so far, they don't stop. And uh, that's not good. Now, I haven't been to the east yet. Some bandages, that's always good. Actually, it might be worth taking down this uh, this wall here. For the sake of movement. Uh, we'll grab those and the fabric scraps. Did I go over here to the sweat locker? I think I did. Did not. Alright, we gotta get out of here before those guys show up. Because I'm not in an advantageous position here. So first time I ran across them, I was in that room when you first go into your left, where that medical uh, locker is. And I was able to fight them through that door. Um, I think like five or so spawn for each wave. But then they don't stop. They just keep coming. You don't really get a chance to heal up or repair or any sort of reprieve, honestly. Um, so it's important to just get through it as fast as you can. Again, at least in my experience. Um, it is worth killing a few of them because they do drop oddities. Uh, they drop two that are worth uh, two apiece. So I will try to fight one wave, but I want to finish up. Also, I haven't explored that hatch yet. I went somewhere else before I did that. Um, here we do need to use a nicer lockpick to get inside. Some scraps, and then there's a quest item, or miscellaneous item, which we'll read about once I get the chance. All right, so here is the scanner. Uh, one Mark III frag grenade does kill the scanners in one hit. So is a throwing spear if it hits, so. Son of a gun.
All right, so fill tooth. We'll read about all these once we get out of here. I can pick up one more of those for some experience, but then uh, then it's not worth killing them anymore. There is a reason why I'm coming back south instead of like west or east. Um, well, I haven't been to the east yet, so I don't know what is there. But the uh, the west is a Chartist outpost. Um, they are neutral towards me. So far, I haven't had a chance to go talk to him yet. I actually ended the episode right before I went to go talk to him. And then it didn't matter because it was corrupted. So, um, let's look at these oddities and things that I've picked up. So I have these miscellaneous things. A mutagen regent Ovid 2. A container holding potent mutagen uh, regent Io 2. Regent Halicon 3. And regent Silas 2. Then we have the HS90 hydraulic pump drive shaft. Uh, this drive shaft is designed to drive a specific type of axial piston pump by connecting it with an electric motor. So these things here look like a puzzle to me. Uh, a lot of games have like a chemistry or some sort of some sort of puzzle involving regions. Um, not a fan of those puzzles, but hey, we'll do what we can. So the one that we found was the it was a filled tooth, is what it was called, right? Yes, yeah, a filled tooth. This tooth has a dental filling, which can only mean hinting that those little chertling guys that we're killing are, uh... Uh, humans. There we go. Jeez. Sorry, I'm so out of it, having already recorded this. There was, um... What else did we pick up? We picked up a... I don't remember what it was called. Oh, I can probably just scroll up here, right? Pendulums, there we go. Here they are. A set of four identical metal balls, each suspended by two strings. We set them in motion, interesting things happen. So I might actually, I might end up having more time to uh, go talk to the Chertis set this time around because I know what I'm doing. At least more so than I did. I want to check out this dumpster because I don't know if I open it yet. Alright, so I do want to aggro more of those uh, Chertlings or whatever, what are they called? Yeah, Charlie. All right, so I can get the next oddity. I'm also interested in this hatch. I haven't been down there yet. But we will wait here for now. Yeah, the last episode took up a lot of a lot of it was taken up by fighting these guys. Oh yeah, this guy also drops tumors, which spawns tentacles. Did it just spawn more ten? You know what? Whatever. Let's see who kill this guy. Or not. All right, so a couple of things. One, I need to take care of. I'm just gonna grenade myself. Everything around. Not dealing with that.
Look at one of these guys drop the filled tooth. Perfect. That's all we need. Yeah, so I actually lucked out. Well, I didn't luck out. I was standing here afraid to move because I wanted to heal up before uh, fighting more of those guys in my first attempted recording. And I decided to see what the name of the place was. And it's uh, the Cytosine Outpost, which is where the um, the Chertis are. You can just walk right up here and you can see them. All standing there, I guess, waiting for me. Keep my eyes peeled for more of those regions and stuff. I haven't explored this area yet, so this is all new to me. Chertis Rassifor. Rassifor. One of the Rassifors lifts his weapon at the very first sight of your indistinguishable contour, shouting for the rest of the guards. The Faceless, they are attacking again. Cole, fire, fire. Before he gets the chance to unleash a hail of bullets, he seems so keen on unleashing. One of the other, significantly taller Rassifor guards stops him. Hold it, brother. That could be one of our own. The edgy Rassifor slowly lowers his weapon uh, while his comrade turns to you. You there, identify yourself. I am a Chartist Brothers. Just like you, I come from the Institute. The two of them look at each other. Come closer, but do so slowly. Approach the barricade. That's good enough. As you come to a full stop, all eyes fall on you in an act of great scrutiny. Where's your robe, brother? <laughs> Only an idiot would wear a Chartist robe in faceless infested caves. I don't want to get cold on sight. Besides, their attack on the Institute was sudden. I didn't have the time to grab my robe. And only a faceless infiltrator would be able to survive in deep caverns. I'm not buying any of this. Cole the liar. Cole. Alright, we're going to load because I do want to be able to trade with them. And I know where I can find a robe. It's actually right through this door. Should have healed up first. But that's okay. We'll just go grab this guy's robe real quick. He was... This one, I think. Nope, nope, nope. We're just running. We're not dealing with that. We're just running. Don't do it. Don't you do it, you jerk. All right. Safe. Didn't think about that. Alright, uh, let's see here. Let's do this. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so surviving in the deep caverns is going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, I'm quickly learning. With that in mind, we can go ahead and equip our robe. I'm assuming they're going to have a trader that I can talk to. Flashbang. A flare. Alright, let's go ahead and quick save and I'll just get through this dialogue real fast. Alright, approach the barricade. Slap my desk. That's all right. Well, he looks like one of us. Chert is evolution, brother. Evolution is Chert. Good. Now, if you can, I'm not convinced. Me and Brad surely know our greetings, brother. Let's ask him something that only a Chertist would know. Something that will surely prove he is one of us. The Talai Rassifor ponders for a moment before asking you the question. What was the last name of the Biocore Armed Forces captain who escorted Iodine to deep caverns during the expedition? Only those who have read the original report can possibly know the answer. It was Braddock, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, nope, was not Braddock. Was it not? 
I don't remember. Uh, I thought it was sporadic. We'll try it again. Marshall? I know. I've read the report, alright? I can figure this out. I mean, it's gotta be one of them, right? I can't believe I don't remember. Well, I'm just desperate for somewhere to recuperate. It wasn't Brandon, was it? Giacomo? I remember this word. I remember this name, Giacomo. But Braddock is familiar too. Who is Braddock? It's one of these. I know that it is. Uh, let's see. Sagan? That is correct. I think that is all the proof we need. You can enter the Cytosine outpost, brother. I'd like to talk to wh with whoever is in charge here. His Excellency Harmo Stavros can be found in his office. Go straight, then left to get to it. I'm sure he wants to know that. I'm sure he wants to know what is going on over at the at the institute. Oh, I can't read. Sure, guide you, brother. Sure, guide you too. All right, so they are a neutral faction. All right, let's quick save, and then we'll loot this area. Oh man. Alright, none of them are unlocked. Alright, let us go ahead and... I don't remember what I was about to do. Oh yeah, repair what we can. Alright, I'm gonna see if I can, let's quick save and see if I can change into my riot gear now and have them not get mad at me. It's a numerical keypad in front of you. On it is a red LED which flashes brightly. It seems like you need to type in the correct code in order to unlock it. I don't particularly want to talk to the to Stavros right now, but all right, let's talk to this guy. Speak to his. Uh, oh, man, we gotta talk to that guy first. All right, who I assume is in here, right? Yeah, there's Stavros. What's over here? I don't still want to read his dialogue and get caught up. Ah, screw it. Let's do it. A man wearing an intricately decorated preservation uniform stands behind the large desk. Immediately your eyes are drawn to a symbol on his robe. An all-familiar eye surrounded with equi equidistant tentacles, four in this instance. A hulking guard in the room stands, in, stands still in silence. Silence which consumes the room as His Excellency, Excellency patiently awaits your salutation. Man. 
I'm struggling. Place your hand on your chest and bow down slightly. Chart his evolution, Your Excellency. Harmo Stavros answers in a confident, booming voice of a middle-aged man. Evolution is Chert. I'm Harmo Stavros. Welcome to Cytosine Outpost. I'm Brondon. Pleased to meet you. Now, Brondon, I'd like you to tell me what in Chert's magnificence is happening at the Institute building. Uh, the Faceless launched a full-scale attack on the Institute. The battle was still raging during the time of my descent, so I'm unsure of its outcome. Sadly, their attack was devastating in comparison. What you see here is almost everything left of active preservation forces in deep caverns. I presume Iodine is safe. Yeah, I'm sad to inform you that Iodine was killed by the Faceless. He was involved in the combat, and despite him fighting the invaders bravely, did not make it out alive. Harmo Stavros lowers his head slightly. No. He turns toward the only guard in the room, and their stares meet. Then, he looks directly at you. This, the information regarding Iodine's death must not leave this room. Are we clear? Morale is already too low for us to further bury it into the ground. If anyone asks you, Iodine is still alive and is resisting the Faceless with the rest of Preservation Forces. Again, are we clear on that, Brondon? Yes, Your Excellency. Very well. Very well. While well, Iodine's death is a serious blow to the Institute of Chert, at least you bear us some good news. Hopefully our brothers and sisters will find a way to reinforce us, because we're unable to repair the elevator from here. One more question, Brondon. Before we are finished, how did you manage to get down here, and are you alone? Uh, before his death, Iodine sent me to help with Church defenses, and I am alone. The elevator stopped working during the descent, but a lucky opening in the wall saved me. I see. The Faceless must have disabled the elevator in order to cut us off. However, who are you to earn yourself Iodine's trust enough for him to send you alone? I've never seen you before, so you must have joined the Institute of Church during my relatively short absence. And I've too never seen Iodine so favorable toward a novitiate. A lot has happened during your absence. Let's leave it at that. He looks at you for for a few quiet moments before continuing. A lot has happened. That I cannot deny, Brondon. Now, did Idon make any attempts at coming down with you? According to emergency plan we had, he was supposed to go to Chert. From what you told me, I somehow draw a conclusion that he didn't ha make any such attempts. He did, but he never made it. In the end, I suppose that is the least relevant thing now. He sighs. Alright, Brondon. You've earned yourself some rest. Should you need supplies, speak to Rassifor Prevlik in the armory. A word of caution, though. He's been injured during the battle with the Devolved, and is still severely traumatized. He's very unstable, so do not speak to him about the current events so not to upset him. Am I clear? Keep the talk minimal, and watch what you say. And also remember, the official word is that Idon is alive and well, and that the situation at the Institute of Chert is stable. If that is clear, you're free to leave unless you have further questions. Uh, do you have any tasks for me, Your Excellency? What are you good at doing? I am a skilled individual. I can deal with a lot of difficult situations. My Rastafors are demoralized, tired, and some even traumatized by the recent events. On the other hand, you seem rather enthusiastic and capable. I might just have the perfect assignment for you. The situation is, as you are perfectly aware, very grim. We need every man, woman, turret, rifle, and bullet if we're going to overcome what fell upon us. But even all that won't help us unless we have the right information. Knowing the whereabouts of your enemy and planning for his next move can turn the tide of any conflict. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to move out of Cytosine Outpost as soon as you are able and perform reconnaissance of the Hollow Earth Complex as well as the areas east of it. That is the direction where all major faceless attacks have come from. I presume that they have set up a base of operations from which they are launching these attacks. This base, or bases, should be your primary reconnaissance targets if possible. The Battle of the Nucleus, despite happening nearly 60 years ago, taught us that the Faceless are capable of performing brutal cybernetic augmentation procedures on captives in order to turn them into corrupted, mindless war machines. I doubt that doctrine has changed since. If you encounter any captured Rassifors, do try and save them from such fate. 
I'm asking a lot of you, and know that it is a tremendously difficult task, but our options are limited. I'm on the job. Good luck, and shirt guide you. Uh, let's see. I've been experiencing this aching sensation in my head ever since I came to this place. Why is that so? I see. I presume you haven't been prepared for your descent, so I understand why you've been feeling the sensations. It takes some time for Chert to probe the minds of those who wander into its domain, and the process might feel uncomfortable for the untrained Chertists such as yourself. However, for others, those whom Chert perceives as threats are simply unwanted, for, the, for those effects would be much more severe. Can you tell me more about Chert? Chert is formless, you know that, but not mindless. It can exert its mental influence over this whole area of deep caverns, cytosine outposts, well, whole, ho whole hollow earth, and of course nucleus, and does so by controlling its minions, who follow its will, in this case, helped us fight the faceless. You've probably encountered some already. They are everywhere. It is the same ability it uses to speak to Iodine, who is most attuned to Chert's mind, and understands it the best. The sole reason why Idon is the only one allowed to enter the Nucleus is because Church simply wouldn't let anyone else so close to itself. It is its will. We must abide. All this shows the magnificence of Church. Even in its most vulnerable phase, during its regeneration, it has a way to defend itself, to influence all that is around it. There were traitors in the past who spoke of Church as if it were as a mere fabrication, and told that a trip to deep caverns would only prove their claims. Ironically for them, it proves exactly the opposite. It proves Chert's magnificence. But what can you tell me about the Faceless Invasion? First of all, we haven't had contact with the Inbreds in decades, so hearing about their invasion of Core City lifted a few eyebrows in preservation. When I discussed the matter with Idon, we came to a decision that it is best if I descend to Deep Caverns with, initi initially, several more Rastafor combat units in order to make sure Cytosine outposts and Nucleus are well defended. If you are prepared, how do they manage to overwhelm you? Sadly, it seems we greatly underestimated their forces. Decades ago, Faceless were, far, were as far off from being a match for us as history has shown. Now, they outnumber us not only in armed personnel, but in mechanization as well, as their tunneling machines allow such mobility and support that we were unable to match them. Their tactics are, and I'm not glad to admit this, but they proved to be extremely effective. Simultaneous flanking attacks made sure outside perimeter was quickly breached. Their initial push might have even allowed them to reach Cytosine Outpost itself, but our minefields were enough to slow them down, allowing our forces to regroup and form another line of defense, which proved effective for a time. However, no matter how many inbreds we culled, the troops just kept receiving reinforcements. A combination of excellent maneuvering and overwhelming numbers meant that eventually they were going to breach our defensive lines. And so they did. They made it to our final defensive position, as you can see by their corpses just beyond the base walls. Wait, didn't Chert's minions help you fight the Faceless? Chert's minions were one of the reasons we were still alive, as their numbers, if nothing else, matched that of the Faceless. What secured our victory was the fact that the Faceless ultimately couldn't withstand the magnificence of Chert's mind. I saw the effects myself. Some of them were dropping their weapons and falling to the ground, shaking and rolling until finally coming to eternal rest. Soon after these incidents began to occur, and naturally reduced their combat effectiveness, they retreated. They haven't made any advances since then. And what do you think of the Faceless? Yeah, why do you think the Faceless invaded half of Underrail at this particular time? One might argue that they have finally grown strong enough to do so, but there is one little detail which explains it. And had I been aware of it earlier, things would have turned out differently. Yeah, what is it? It is some sort of strange object which was brought down to deep caverns just recently. Now, what can you tell me about this artifact? It's a strange polyhedron with even stranger markings. One of the investigators only showed it to me, but I know of its use very little. Regardless, I believe this object is the reason for everything that, is, that had happened, starting with Core City invasion up until now. And had I made that connection earlier, we might have been more prepared to deal with the Faceless. How so? I wasn't aware, I wasn't aware where the artifact came from. I was only told by the investigators that Iodine ordered it sent to Nucleus. One single bit of information was necessary for me to realize that an object that technologically advanced existing in Core City at the time of the Faceless Invasion was as far from a coincidence as, can, as it can be possible. I wonder why Iodine hasn't made that same connection, but what happened, happened. But you do know it came from Core City, you just said it. 
I realize that far too late once I've spoken to one of the surviving investigators. Magnificent shirt, had I only paid more attention, we wouldn't have moved everyone to deep caverns. Preservation forces as a single whole could have repelled the faceless, but we were split. And why was the artifact brought to Chert? That you need to ask Iodine. I know nothing other than it is something exceptional. I can only assume that it is something worthy of Chert's attention. Many such, many such objects have found their way to the nucleus, and if we preserve it, many more will. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to call it here. We'll continue talking to this guy in the next episode. I just want to burn through all this dialogue right now. Because time is finite. And also, I'm starting to, I'm reading very quickly. I'm a little, uh, on edge because I had to re-record this whole thing. Alright, so the next episode, we'll finish talking to Stavros. Uh, we'll go talk to this guy over here and try to do some trading. I'm not sure exactly where Nucleus is, if it's there or up here. Uh, there's also that hatch I want to go down, so let's mark that on the map. And then we'll figure out, yeah. After we talk to these two guys, we'll figure out what to do next. Um, probably see where these go first, and then I'll go check out that hatch, and then we'll go east. Is this where the faceless are? Yeah. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.